with the latest trailer that came out for Falcon and the Winter Soldier, it looks like Marvel is going to be introducing a character called Flag Smasher into the MCU. Flag Smasher is a pretty deep dive for the MCU. Unless you're really into comics, you've probably never heard of him. And reasonably so. He's never done anything too important in comics, and he hasn't really even shown up all that much. I had to go back and read every issue that he's been in, because other than recognizing the name, I didn't really know anything about him. So I've already done all the legwork of reading through a lot of not really good 80s comics, so you don't have to. And in this video, we'll be covering the origins of Flag Smasher, any relevant stories he was in, and how he might connect to the MCU. First of all, it looks like the MCU is using the name, the Flag Smashers, is the name of an anti-government terrorist group. But in comics, Flag Smasher was a person, Carl Morgunthru. He's the founder and sometimes leader of an anti-government terrorist group called Ultimatum which stands for the Underground, Liberated, Totally Integrated Mobile Army to Unite Mankind. Yeah, it's a very comic-y name, which is probably why the MCU might just be using the name Flag Smashers in place of the Ultimatum group, because again, it's a terrible name. Let's now go into Flag Smashers' powers, and he doesn't have any. He's just a normal guy, but he does have a black belt in martial arts. He wears this suit that grants him increased strength and durability. It's something like an Iron Man suit. It's just a normal suit that has some robotic functions. He uses a variety of weapons, usually a mace, but he's also been seen with a flamethrower pistol. He's highly intelligent, studied at Oxford University, he can speak multiple languages, but his most powerful weapon of all is that he's really rich. What are your superpowers again? I'm rich. Flex Spencer was introduced in Captain America number 312 in 1985, where he's introduced literally smashing flags than burning a flag manufacturing factory. Gotta give him credit, he stays true to the name. And he's mainly a Captain America villain. Right in the first issue, we get a giant info dump on his motivations and his history and an entire page of him just thinking to himself. Very convenient. Carl's father was the heir to a Swiss banking family, but his father gave up banking to go into politics to try to promote world peace. His father became an ambassador, so him and his son would constantly move to different countries. Carl was constantly being bullied and feeling like an outsider just because he wasn't from the same country as his peers. He initially planned to follow his father's footsteps and go into politics himself, until a protest that turned into a riot outside the Bavarian embassy led to his father being trampled to death. So after his father's death, Carl believed that the reason his father died and the reason why the world has so many problems is because of nationalism. Nationalism is the reason why there's wars and poverty. So his main motivation is to tear down every individual national government and unite them all under one rule. And the only way to achieve this is through violence. And using the fortune that his father left him, he decides to take on the persona of Flag Smasher. I mean, his motivations really aren't evil. His goal is to truly have world peace. He just goes about achieving it in a pretty evil way. So let's get into the first time that Flag Smasher meets Captain America. And it's actually kind of funny, or at least I think so. So Flag Smasher takes over a press conference that Captain America was having, and he gives this very long, passionate speech about how nations' borders are, act as dividers in the world, and they pit everyone against each other, but in reality, we're all equals. But after he's done with his speech, the whole crowd just calls him a communist. And he kind of freaks out because he's like, will not you guys listening? I'm not a communist. I don't want any countries. And then Captain America knocks him out. He's then kicked out of the country for being, you know, a terrorist. I feel like that's something he should probably be in prison for, but comics. So he disappears for a few months, but the next time we see him is when he started his organization called Ultimatum. And he hijacks a plane, and he demands to meet Captain America in exchange for the hostages. And when Cap shows up to save the hostages, he's forced to kill one of the Ultimatum agents because they're about to open fire on the crowd, which Cap claims is the very first time he's ever murdered anyone. So he's pretty mad. Captain America is not a killer. So he then goes to confront Flag Smasher, and of course they fight until Flag Smasher falls off a cliff. But Cap being Cap, goes to go save his life. And then we get this very weird page. I hope he's just trying to keep him warm. But Flag Smasher does live, and even after saving his life, he still tries to kill Cap, but fails and is arrested. And he doesn't show up again in comics for like a decade. And when he does show up, apparently Flag Smasher fell into the Arctic Ocean and was found by Roxanne Oil, which is this very corrupt, very wealthy conglomerate corporation, kind of like Amazon. But when Roxanne Oil found Flag Smasher in the Arctic, he was brain damaged from being in the cold for so long, so they take him back and they drug him, and they use him as a weapon. And he dons a new outfit. Well, kinda. He's just shirtless, with his old pants, and has the word smash. I don't know, I guess it's tattooed on his chest? He just kinda says random political words like policy. Anyway, Captain America defeats him again, but we jump to the early 2000s, and Flag Smasher has taken over a small European country, and he starts doing everything that he preached against. 
basically becomes a dictator, and when the people start to revolt against him, he tells his agents to start firing on civilians. But he's assassinated by Domino. So the original Flag Smasher in comics is actually dead. But like many terrorist groups in the real world, if you kill their leader, another leader just takes its place. A man by the name of Guy Theoralt takes over as a new Flag Smasher. He is responsible for the building of Ultimatum's own helicarrier. Unfortunately, that helicarrier is brought down by Deadpool. In retaliation, Flag Smasher and Ultimatum attempt to kill Deadpool's daughter, which turned out to be a terrible decision because Deadpool kills like all the Ultimatum agents and allows Flag Smasher to live just so a new one wouldn't take his place and go after his family again. Guy stays true to his word, but Ultimatum gets mad because they don't know why he doesn't seek revenge on Deadpool. And they end up killing Guy and a random agent named Carl takes his place. And Carl and the entire Ultimatum group does one huge assault on Deadpool and Deadpool slaughters every one of them. Like, no survivors. Super gory. And honestly, from there, I'm not positive. I don't think he's appeared in any comics since then. I haven't seen him in anything. And that took place in, like, 2015. So the question is, how will the MCU tie Flag Smasher into the MCU? In my opinion, as of right now, I think the character himself will not appear. The MCU is just using the terrorist group ultimatum and renaming it the Flag Smashers. It kind of seems like they'll focus mainly on that red-haired woman who might be the Red Skull's daughter named Sin. But that's going to do it for this video. Hope you guys liked it. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.